What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Reform Perspective. I am Josiah Spinoza. Today, we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 21. So if you have your Bibles, open them with me as we walk through the word together. The last time we actually got to look and read uh, Paul's um, Paul's message about justification and how justification is actually um, God's gift of reconciliation. And reconciliation is restoring a broken relationship. And so when, when we put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin, God declares us justified, we are declared innocent, and we have peace with God. Our relationship is reconciled back with God. What's up, Joseph? Thanks for coming on, man. So here in verse 12, um, we're going to continue our study through the book of Romans. And in verse 12, he says, therefore. Now, of course, we always have to remember that whenever we come across the word therefore, we have to remember what it's there for. Um, we have to understand what what transition is Paul trying to make here? Because Paul just got read, just got done talking to us about the gospel, about the work of Christ um, in our justification by our faith. And so what is it that is being accomplished here? This word, therefore, is a transition word. Either Paul is going to uh, make a point or he's making a conclusion about something he said or he's just um, continuing to qualify and to... Um, to explain, explain and expound upon what he had just said in the previous verses. Um, and so because we have been reconciled, therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, so sin came into the world. That's everyone. This the world everybody sin came into the world everybody is affected by sin through one man that's Adam and death through sin so he's making a conclusion here that just as sin came through one man so death came through sin and so death spread to all men so it didn't just affect the creatures, it didn't just affect creation, um, it affected all people. And of course, men is a general term for humanity, for all peoples. Um, and he's making, he's making conclusions here. The Adam, Adam is the one man here. Through Adam, death came through sin and so that sin that Adam committed brought death and that death spread to all men it spread to everyone because all sinned and this of course is alluding back to uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse uh, 21 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God you can also look at Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 12, where it says that no one is righteous, no, not one. No one does good. No one understands. Everyone has become worthless. These are all realities of our fallen and sinful nature. He goes on to say in verse 13, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given so sin 
that sin that came into the world through Adam, it was in the world. Even before the law was given, even before there was knowledge of sin, even before people had to give an account for the knowledge of their sin, there was still sin uh, because there was death. He says, but sin is not counted where there is no law. So between Adam and Moses, there was no law. That is the Old Testament law. There was no um, governing law for the people in order to live in ha harmony and goodness with one another. And it didn't expose God's holiness uh, to the world. But even though um, there was no accounting for their sin, yet there was death. As we're going to see here in a little bit. Now, don't misunderstand. Um, when um, Paul said that sin is not counted, he's not saying that people are not held responsible for their sin. What I believe, what I think he means, especially as we continue through our study, is that no one gave an accounting or no one had a sense of an accounting because there was no law we know that in Romans chapter 3 that the law gives the knowledge of sin so once you know what sin is then you have an internal struggle of the accounting that comes along with the knowledge of sin but if there's no law how can you know that there is an accounting for your sin how how do you know that there is a debt to be paid how do you know that you are at enmity with god i mean romans 1 does talk about this a little bit when he talks about how um, the gentiles those who do not have the law um, worship other things other than god even though god has made made his divine um, nature obvious and apparent to the Gentiles, and that is through the things that he created. That's in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 18 through 32. It talks about how they suppress that knowledge down. Um, but yet they have no knowledge of the law. And so there is no accounting for it in their hearts and in their minds. In verse 14, yet, he continues on to say, yet death, death reigned from Adam to Moses so between Adam and Moses there was no law given and where there is no law no one has to give an accounting for it even though death reigned it was mastering the hearts and the minds of men um, after the fall of Adam Cain slaughters his brother Abel and Genesis chapter 6 verse 8 talks about how the hearts of men were evil continuously and so there was there was a there was a sin nature that reigned in the hearts of men between adam and moses even though there was no law and people didn't have the knowledge of their sin because they didn't have the knowledge of the holiness of god through the law uh, but even so where there is no law there is no accounting for it yet death reigned there was the consequences of sin um, sin was still a con or death was still a consequence of the sin of Adam. And he says, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam. Um, that's us. There was only uh, two people who disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. It makes it plain to us that when God created Adam and Eve, he commanded them not to eat of the tree in the middle of the garden. That is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They were commanded not to do so. And um, when they disobeyed or if they had disobeyed God, which God said that he would kill them, that he would um, take their life. He says the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
and they ate and they disobeyed God and God in his mercy did not take their life in that immediate moment but from that moment onward they began to die not only though that but their internal being died death reigned from Adam Adam experienced death at that very moment and that was death of their inner man of their of their inner being um, and their bodies began to experience the consequences of that internal death and so even over those verse 14 yet death reigned from adam to, to moses even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of adam and so death reigned with all kinds of people all between adam and moses you know um adam died eve died um his children died noah died um abraham died isaac jacob all the patriarchs um, they all died even though the law had not yet been given because the consequence of sin is death even though there is no knowledgeable accounting of one's sin and so he says even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of adam who was a type now uh, he's going to make a compare and contrast between adam and christ um, not saying that Adam and Christ are exactly the same and that uh, Christ is also responsible for sin that's that's not his point here but rather what he's trying to say ultimately is that when Adam sinned and it, it infected everyone it infected the world we see this and when it came into the world and it infected everyone but that consequence of Adam's sin and transgression was a type it was similar of the one and of course the one being Christ who was to come now he talks about Christ in the past tense because he's talking about those who lived between Adam and Moses so don't miss don't don't misunderstand Paul he's not trying to say that Christ had not yet come he knew Christ had come he talked about Christ's um, work on the cross he so he already knew that christ had come uh, the first time um, and he's not talking about the second time here either he's just talking between about the reality between adam and moses and so christ's work is similar in its nature to adam's transgression um, because we'll see here in the future verses uh, what paul is trying to say here verse 15 he says, but the free gift, that's the work of Christ, uh, the cross, and also um, justification by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that's the free gift. The free gift is not like the trespass. This is Adam, of course. So even though Adam's trespass was a type of the one who was to come, that free gift of the one who was to come is not like the trespass of Adam. They're similar, but they're not equivalent. Um, they have similar consequences. Adam's is a consequence of death. And we'll see here in a little bit that Christ's work has a consequence of life. We continue on. For if many died, and I would suggest that it's all, because sin came into the world through one man's transgression through one man's trespass for if many die through one man's trespass that's uh, Adam much more much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of God of the one man Jesus Christ abounded for many so the purpose here is he's making a compare and contrast he says look Adam Adam messed it up when he sinned and he disobeyed it infected everyone it infected the whole world every every person's heart was depraved from the moment of conception because that's the nature of 
Adam's sin towards God. It infected everyone. But much more, and indeed much more, because the grace of God is more powerful than sin. The free gift of God is more powerful, much more powerful than the one man's trespass. So much more have the grace of God, that's salvation, redemption, justification through Jesus Christ, and the free gift by the grace of of the one man Jesus Christ abounded for many that's all us who put our faith hope and trust in Jesus now that the reason I wouldn't say all like he would say in previous verses is because not everyone believes and so the gift of Jesus Christ does not encompass the entire world the same way that Adam's trespass encompassed the entire world because we did not have to believe in Adam in order to receive his consequence we didn't even have to have knowledge of the law in order to receive Adam's consequence that is sin and death that just was given to us by virtue of being born in the likeness of Adam but the free gift of, of grace through Jesus Christ that's only received through faith and not everyone receives and so that's why i wouldn't say that it's all i wouldn't say that it's all i would say that it's many but i wouldn't say that it's all verse 16 and the free gift that's justification by grace through faith free gift is not like the result of the one man's sin that's adam for the judgment Pay attention here. The judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. We were condemned before God. Our sin and the death that reigned in our hearts uh, brought condemnation before God. We were cut off from God. We were at enmity with God. We were enemies of God. That was the judgment that followed the one man's trespass. That's that's what was judged upon the whole world when Adam sinned. He says, but the free gift following many trespasses. And there are millions and millions, and I would even argue trillions probably, if not a number that is beyond our comprehension many trespasses trillions of trespasses daily actions always always there's always evil reigning in the hearts of men but the free gift that follow those many trespasses remember that free gift is justification by grace through faith jesus christ alone no one else can bring us that free gift so they're similar but they're not equivalent they have consequences in the sense that it can infect many people if not everyone and don't misunderstand me if the whole world bow the knee to jesus christ if the whole world said uh, we are going to believe in jesus christ and we will bow the knee to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We repent and we turn our eyes to God. And we will live and worship for we will worship Him for the rest of our lives. And they received Christ by faith. If every single individual in the whole world did it, they would receive the free gift of justification. Because Christ's death is that powerful. But the sad reality is only a remnant will believe and receive truly for salvation we continue for if because of one man's trespass death reigned through that one man of course we know that one man is adam it's not christ because of one man's trespass 
death reigns through that one man much more. Again, it's more powerful. It's more glorious. It's greater. It's beautiful. It's dynamic. Much more. Will those who receive... That's a, that's the difference right here. You don't have to receive Adam's sin in order to be accounted for Adam's sin reigning in your hearts through death. But you do have to receive the free gift of Jesus Christ through faith. So much more will those who receive the abundance of grace. Now, pay attention to that because it's not just a little bit or just barely enough to cover one sin. No, it's no, it's an abundance. It's it's overwhelming. It's it overdoes. It overpowers. It overpowers the reign of death. It does away with it. It replaces the the death that masters the heart. It it, it destroys it and it and it lavishes upon grace, like it says in Ephesians one. God lavishes his grace upon us. He abundantly gives of grace and the free gift of righteousness reigns. You see the replacement of death. Death is no more and is replaced with life. We are made alive through the abundance of the gift of grace. Just like Colossians chapter 1 talks about how we are transferred from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Death that used to reign in us and master us and control us is killed. The sting of sin is death, but death is put to death in the death of Christ. And when we come to Jesus and receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of, unrighteous, of righteousness, then life reigns through the one man, Jesus Christ. How glorious the gospel is to do this for us by his grace. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, it says, remember, therefore, we have to pay attention to what it's there for. I mean, you just got done explaining to us what his entire purpose of, he was trying to explain to us what what happened with Adam and what happened to us because of Adam and now what is happening to us who believe in Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led, one trespass led to the condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness, that's God's faithfulness to, to save us, to redeem us. One act of righteousness leads to Justification, we are declared innocent. And that justification says that it leads to life. It leads to justification and life for all men. Now remember, not every single person in the whole world is justified, like we saw in verse 4. Because you have to receive it. Much more will those who receive So even though it says all men, back here in verse 18, all men, all peoples, it doesn't mean that every single person in the whole world has received justification and life because of Jesus Christ. Because if you believe that, then that's universalism. You believe that everyone is saved or you believe that everyone's sins are paid for well the scriptures teach that you have to receive it because when Christ died he substitutionarily atoned 
for all those who would receive. Verse 19. For as by the one man's disobedience, by Adam's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So because of Adam's disobedience to God in the Garden of Eden, then many were made sinners. Of course, it's talking about all men. So, by the one man's obedience, that's Christ's obedience on the cross, have this mind among you, that even Christ being in the form of God, did not hold fast to it as though it was something to treasure above his work that he would come down and put on the form of a slave to be crucified and be obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. That's, that's, that's the one man's disobedience. And he's not just the man, he's the God man. And his obedience by that one man's disobedience, the many will be made righteous. And this, of course, is the free gift of God by faith through grace or by grace through faith alone. By no other means is one saved. By no other means. And to finish off in verse 20 through 21, now the law came in to increase the trespass. So even though, like we saw back in uh, the beginning verses, Sorry about that. Just like we saw back here in the beginning verses. For sin indeed was in the world before the law. So he continues on with that same. That same idea. Now the law. Came in. To increase the trespass. So everyone was experiencing the consequences of sin through death and then when the law came it increased even though when the law was given it was supposed to bring holiness and righteousness and salvation it was supposed to bring people closer to god and in fact it did the opposite because the hearts of people are wicked always they do not desire to follow the law they do not desire to obey god because the mind that is sent in the flesh cannot please god indeed it cannot it cannot so when the law came in even though the law is holy and good and it was supposed to lead to righteousness it actually came in to increase the trespass but where sin increased because sin and did increase through the knowledge of the law because with the knowledge of the law comes an accounting for that knowledge of your sin where sin increased grace abounded all the more much more it's more powerful it's more overwhelming it's more uh, it's more abundant the grace of god overcomes and overflows and does away with the trespass and the condemnation of sin Verse 21, so that as sin reigned in death. So sin is mastered in death. And everyone is dead. Ephesians 2 makes it clear that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. And those who have not believed in Jesus Christ are dead in their trespasses and sin and so where sin reigned in death grace also might reign through righteousness leading to eternal life through jesus christ our lord and it is only through jesus christ solus christus Don't rely on anything other than Christ for your justification, for your sanctification. 
Do not rely on anything. Don't boast in anything else other than Christ and Christ alone because he alone is able to save to the uttermost. He is a perfect savior. He is the founder of our faith and he, he is the finisher of our faith. We cannot do it on ourselves. We cannot do it alone. If God were to leave us to our own demises, we would increase in our trespasses and sin would continue to reign through death in us. But praise God that the free gift of eternal life is through the grace of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that you have learned, that you have you have grown, that you have experienced this to the core of your being. I pray that the Holy Spirit would convict you and bring you to the full knowledge of salvation in Jesus Christ. God bless you guys until next time on Walking Through the Word.